How do keyframes work? Why is the graph editor so important? What's interpolation? I'm on a mission to explain every 3D concept in the simplest way possible. And this video is sponsored by PCBWay. And today we're covering the basics of 3D animation, the timeline, keyframes and interpolation, the graph editor and easing, practical tips to improve your animations right now, delaying and match cuts, and some unique ways of animating. Let's jump into it. So how does 3D animation work? Well, to animate something, we mark a starting point and an end point. And if we click play, the object will move between those points. Easy, right? These points we just set are called keyframes. With keyframes, we can animate the color, size, brightness, displacement, anything really. And all keyframes can be found in the timeline. Keyframes show what values are changing and when they're changing. And if you set a keyframe for certain values like location, it actually creates three keyframes. One for each axis, X, Y, and Z. These control the object's position along three axes of the 3D space. I recommend watching my video covering the 3D basics if you want to learn more about the X, Y, and Z axis. You can imagine an animation as a sequence of pictures, or more accurately, frames. And the frame rate is a number that tells us how many frames per second the animation is playing. The higher the frame rate, the more frames are displayed each second, which makes the animation look smoother. So if you want your animation to feel movie-like, a frame rate of 24 is a good choice, as this is the movie standard. Or if you want something to feel like stop motion, you could try 12 frames per second. For games, 30 or 60 frames per second is common. Before we continue, a quick thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They're best known for making custom PCBs, but they also do CNC machining and full 3D printing, which is perfect if you ever want to turn your 3D models into real objects. You can upload your design, pick a material, and they'll take care of printing, finishing, and shipping. It's super easy, whether it's for a prototype, a display piece, or even just a physical version of your sculpt. PCBWay makes it affordable and fast. Check them out through my referral link in the description. And again, thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to our animation. We've set two keyframes, one at the start and one at the end. And the 3D program calculates for us how it should animate in between. However, in the timeline, we don't really see what's happening in between, just the start and the end. And to see this, we have to switch to the graph editor also called graph view, f-curve mode, or animation graphs, depending on the software. Here, we can see the keyframes with a line in between. The line visualizes the interpolation, which defines how values change over time. And we can use a few different interpolation modes, and let's see how they affect our animation. Remember, we're animating the x location from 0 to 5, and currently, we're using the linear interpolation mode which transitions between 0 and 5 at a constant speed. If we set interpolation to stepped, it will not transition gradually, and instead change from 0 to 5 instantly at the end. And then we have Bezier, which turns the line into a curve we can modify. The Bezier curve can be modified with handles, similar to how you edit curves or work with vector files in the science software. For example, if we set the curve like this, our cube starts off by moving slowly, then fast in the middle and slows down towards the end. Speeding up and slowing down smoothly like this is called easing. Most things in nature start and stop gradually and rarely move at a constant speed. And easing can really help improve your animation. For example, we have this animation of a cube jumping up and falling down. But something doesn't feel right. If we look at the graph editor, we can see the cube moves at a constant speed up and a constant speed down. This is not natural. Let's try to add some easing to the top of the jump. And it already looks much more natural. Our jump is looking nice, but the landing is a bit abrupt. To fix this, let's add a small bounce to the landing. Copy this landing keyframe and move it to the right. Then let's move this keyframe slightly down. And play. It's subtle, but small touches like this can make a big difference. Alright, so say we have three spheres, all jumping at the same time. And perfectly synchronized movements doesn't feel very natural. So let's add some delay. 
select the middle sphere and move the keyframes forward a bit. And let's also do the same for the last sphere. Perfect. The small delays makes the animation look more natural. We can also use the same idea to delay different parts of the animation, not just the movement. For example, here's a cube scaling up from nothing, falling and landing. How can we make this a little bit more interesting? Let's look at our keyframes, specifically our X scale. The X scale changes the width of the cube. Let's move this first keyframe slightly up and then move everything to the right. Perfect. Playing with delay can make your animations more interesting and realistic. Like, look at this tail. Tails are often hard to animate. They have many segments and all of them move independently. This tail is moving up and down, but it feels kind of stiff. And you might have already guessed what we are doing. Yep, we are adding delay. So let's delay each part of the tail to rotate slightly later than the previous part of the tail. Perfect. And it already feels more natural. But alright, that's enough about delay. Let me show you a magic trick. We have this sphere and we want to turn it into a cube. However, transitioning instantly to a cube doesn't feel smooth. But if we animate this sphere to move from left to right and in the middle of the movement when the sphere is moving the fastest, we change it into a cube. Because the motion continues, the transition feels smoother. Like magic, we can use animation to hide transitions. And the same idea applies to camera cuts. If a cut between two shots feels harsh, try adding some movement before and after the cut. This is called a match cut and is often used to make transitions much more seamless. And if you want to further improve your animations, or especially if you want to animate characters, I recommend watching videos about the 12 principles of animation. I won't cover it here since there are already many great videos on this topic. But so far, we've only talked about manual animation, but there's a few workflows to animate automatically. You've probably heard about the first one, motion capture. Motion capture used to only be possible by wearing a suit covered in dots and using multiple cameras and trackers to track your movements. And this is still the most accurate and professional method, but today there are many tools that lets you do motion capture just by using your webcam. And motion capture is a great way to generate a lot of animation quickly. However, the workflow isn't always smooth because you often have to clean up the animation after recording it. And another approach is to animate interactively by connecting a controller, mouse or keyboard to your character. For example, moving the mouse could make the character look around and clicking could make them blink. This is a pretty fun way to animate and if you combine it with sound input, you can even animate a character speaking. You can also automate animation using nodes, code or drivers. And drivers can connect values to each other and change them with math equations. For example, instead of animating the wheels of a car manually, we can link the wheels rotation to the car's forward movement. So when the car moves forward, the wheels spin automatically. And finally, there's simulation. You can simulate a cube tumbling downstairs, glass breaking, or a flag waving in the wind. And that's about it for this video. I couldn't make space for every animation concept since it's a really big topic. But if there's something specific you want to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to support the channel, get access to my project files, watch exclusive videos and join the Digitalist Discord, you can join my Patreon for $3.49 or try it for free for a week and cancel anytime. And the first 10 people to click the Patreon link in the description get free access for a month. Thanks for watching and see you next time.